somebody who watched my uh, latest unprofessional review of the Cadillac uh, SRX. It takes me like a second to remember these stupid three-letter names. But anyway, somebody asked me if I would do a review of the GLE and the GLE Coupe. Um, when I looked at Mercedes-Benz website, I didn't even realize, because I haven't really been paying attention, there's, there's so many cars and so many new products coming out this year. Um, basically, what Mercedes-Benz did was, because the ML started at such a high price, like in like $55,000 with like no equipment, what they did was they created the GLA in order to go down market to all of these uh, fresh new young women who are getting out of school with massive student loan debt and can't afford to get the ML just like their mommy. So what they did was they created the GLA, which is the small SUV, and then they created the uh, larger one, now it's called the GLE. I don't understand what's up with these goddamn three-letter naming strategies. It's really ridiculous. It's annoying. It's like they just... They, I wish they'd just call it something simple. Just give it a name. But anyway, the GLE now replaces basically the ML, and the GLA fills in that gap where, you know, you have a situation where people can't afford to, you know, spend this much. So what they do is they get in around forty or $45,000 into that GLA. So you can still ride around with a Mercedes-Benz name tag, but... Um, you know, you just have a cheaper car. So this is what a GLE looks like. This is the GLE 350 with 4Matic. The GLE starts at uh, $53,600, which is about the same territory as the uh, ML used to be. And with the equipment, heated steering wheel, trailer hitch, Harman Kardon, surround sound, and then it comes with the premium package where you have navigation. Every car should have standard navigation. The navi if, when, when we live in an age where all of our cell phones, even the cheapest piece of garbage Android phones from Samsung have navigation, as far as I'm concerned, all phones should have navigation. All cars should have navigation. Now, I would like it if cars uh, gave you the option of using your cellular connection to get their navigation data, but uh, that's a story for another time So anyway total retail price is sixty one thousand five hundred and ninety dollars So this is basically a sixty two thousand dollar truck Now above this because these things are developed small for these little soccer mommies and these little uh, metrosexual men because these cars are so small the only bigger options really are the Escalade which approaches $90,000 which is basically S-Class money and then there's the Lincoln Navigator the Lincoln Navigator is gonna cost you less than an Escalade by a good amount because as far as I remember the uh, Lincoln Navigator is about seventy seventy two thousand dollars with everything in it it's it, it's less than 73 so this right here is the GLE 350. Now, if you're a stylish badass, this one right here is the GLE 450 AMG Coupe. Now this one's an AMG model, which is not the one I was interested in. I was really interested in the low-end one. This, this is a 70 GLE AMG Coupe. Basically, to me, it looks exactly like the BMW X6. Like, it looks exactly like a BMW X6. The BMW X6 was one of the few cars that BMW made that I actually liked. I'm not a fan of the BMW interior. I'm not a fan of BMW reliability because basically right after the thing gets off warranty, it breaks down. Most people wouldn't know that because most people lease these cars. Always remember a simple rule. You finance Japanese and you lease German. So this one's a 450 Formatic. As you can see, 450 formatic. And this looks exactly like a BMW X6. Exactly like it. It looks exactly like it. Same interior as the other Mercedes, except this one's the AMG version. So, let's see. Um, this one is, again, $74,000. I like to round up. And it gives you a 3.0 liter V6 bi-turbo engine. So basically, because displacement taxes are kicking Europe's ass, they are making cars that cost $75,000 and have less power than the typical Dodge Charger Hellcat or the Dodge Challenger Hellcat. Still a good looking car though. It's a, good, it's a great looking car and the interior is typical Mercedes-Benz. You know, whatever that's worth. Now this is the AMG model. I don't know if they have a regular model, so I'll go and take a look if they have a regular model. I could drive them both, but frankly, a V6 bi-turbo, that doesn't interest me at all. I'm getting more power out of my Hemi. 
but um, let me see if they have a regular model so I can see the regular sticker. Yeah, I see it has the bigger humpback. So this one's the, all right, so this is the GI, it has the third row, I see. Oh, okay. A little bit bigger, longer. Oh, you're taking this one out? Yeah, this one's sold. Oh, it's sold. Oh, it has, oh, okay. Yeah, it's a nice yeah, truck. Yeah, on this. This one's uh, 2013. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Yeah, nice truck. Okay. So this is a GL. So basically you got the GL, the GLE, and then the GLA. So this is a GL 450. Really big truck. I, I'm not a fan of the design of this one. I actually like it when it looks like that uh, GL uh, E Coupe. I like that one better. You gotta check that one out. That's a nice truck. It's a really nice truck. Right. So this is the interior of a GLE. And obviously, uh, the GLE Coupe pretty much looks exactly the same, except it's AMG and it has the bi-turbo V6. Now, basically, the seat comfort is actually pretty good. It's, uh, these seats are pretty firm, and that's actually a good thing because they, you know, that helps them hold up over a long period of time. But see, this is what I was saying about when I was talking about Cadillac. When you have powered headrests and you have, that, that adds a whole new dimension to the car. Now, some people say, oh, you don't really need that. I argue that when you're driving and you're driving at high speeds, it's better to be able to set these features as simply as possible, like keeping them closer to eye level and making it so the driver can set this stuff without having to look for it. That's really the mark of a luxury car. Now, me personally, I don't like this center stack. I've, I never liked the center stack since the um, S500 W220. The W221 improved it by putting everything right here with the command system. Then what they did was they improved it a little bit more by adding this uh, touch panel and by making it, you know, slightly more like a, a touch pad for a cell phone. Now, my thing is, even with Mercedes-Benz, when you're going to pay this kind of money for a car, heated and cooled sheets should automatically be standard. I, it's as if they want to punish you for not buying fully equipped cars. There's no reason why you shouldn't have heated and ventilated or active cooled or whatever seats when you're paying 65000 or more for a car. So BMW is guilty of it, Audi's guilty of it, Mercedes is guilty of it. It seems to me that if you're going to pay this kind of money for a car and you're going to lease it anyway, because most people aren't financing this stuff, at least you lease German and you finance Japanese. If you're going to pay this kind of money for a car, you should have pretty much those major features. Uh, the roof, a moon roof is okay. A panorama moon roof would be nicer, but some people don't want the panorama because, you know, when it gets hot, their kids get cooked in the back. But that's why you have the sunshade. And the sunshades are usually uh, in the Mercedes Benz, they're either right here. Some other cars put them over here. These like look like just lights. These are like map lights or sensors or something. But um, heated seats, cooled seats, navigation, moon roof. That should be the base of a luxury car. I never liked the center stack because of all the buttons. The buttons to me, as Steve Jobs said when he unveiled the iPhone in 2007, the problem with buttons is when you get new features, you can't go and change the buttons on all of the equipment. So it makes more sense to just give you a LCD screen and replace with bitmap images what you want right here. Would it have really cost them that much to have a screen here and a screen there and for these screens to be context sensitive? and every time you go to something new, something new shows up here. Like for instance, there's no reason why these same buttons can't be mirrored on this side using an LCD screen. You know, um, a lot of people like the interior of Tesla because it's dominated by that really big screen. In my opinion, all they've really done was they took a lot of blank space and they just put a really big screen there. That doesn't necessarily scream luxury to me. It's nice that you have it, but basically, if you had an after-tuning market shop, you could do the same thing with a big iPad and you'd probably have an actual better interface. The only thing about it is the Tesla model's designed to interface that pad with the car. Any features that are added to that car will go to that screen and everything is automatically updatable. I think that's actually a really good thing because a touchscreen can just be changed. Steve Jobs was a brilliant freaking man. He was brilliant. 
he was brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant when he redesigned that phone. And uh, he made it so the entire Android market had nothing to do but copy off of everything Apple did. He was absolutely brilliant. Now, I've complained about the uh, powered thigh cushions. You see this headrest? You push this button right here, and this thing goes up and down. I should have that, and I should also have thigh cushions. Thigh cushions, powered headrest. That is the front seat of a luxury car to me. And some people be like, oh, you don't need it. Nah, I really do. And I'm willing to pay for it. And that's all that matters. The fact that I want it and I've got the money to pay for it. This is the inside of a Mercedes-Benz elevator. The fifth floor, Mercedes-AMG. Fourth floor, main entrance. Third floor, delivery. Second and first floor, cars for poor people. They keep those in the basement so that the new car smell isn't corrupted by those, you know, those used cars. You know, visiting one of these places is like, it's like Donald Trump said, it's like, it's like magic. It's like magic. Okay, so this looks like this is a GLE AMG in white. I'm starting to think that the GLE coupe only comes in the AMG version. If that's the case, then, you know, you're, you're looking at a $79,000 price tag with this equipment in it. That might actually not be a good thing because if that's the only way you can buy one, then basically all you're paying for is the style because of a, a, a V6, I mean a V6 really, and then you look at the interior, look at that, that leather, that looks like real leather. I don't know if it is real leather because they have a lot of, uh, they have a lot of uh, faux leather nowadays in most of these cars, but that's some real God, it feels, man, you can smell it, it smells like a pizza in here. It smells, it really does, it smells like a pizza in this oven. So you got the powered headrests, Got this, this beautiful leather, Jesus. This is some serious leather, AMG carpet. <sighs> I, I keep sniffing, you, you can, my goodness. It smells like, it smells like a cow. There's cow in there. <coughs> I don't know how this opens. So, in order to make these cars seem like they're faster, they put Pirellis on everything. Problem is, just like Jeep SRT, <coughs> I don't know. I hope I'm not allergic to this leather smell. I, all of a sudden, I started sneezing. So anyway, um, Pirellis are expensive tires. You're talking about 350 plus for a Pirelli tire. So um, one thing that may go noticed is that the interior space in the back seat isn't really that great. Like for instance, if I put this seat back as far as I would normally sit, interior space isn't really that good. Now this has a nice panoramic roof, and this is this car is all about style, really. This car is all about style over function. This is the kind of car for a soccer mom who's rich, and uh, she can afford she can afford uh, you know the finer things in life, and she drives back and forth between Lord and Taylor and Macy's and Bloomingdale and Neiman Marcus and everything. This is a damn nice car. BMW has nothing on these cars. Mercedes-Benz sits at the top of the market for the very simple reason that BMW, Audi, they can't design stuff that looks this incredible. And anybody I know, there's a lot of people who say, oh yeah, what, well, Audi makes better and blah, 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 blah. But I'll tell you what, Mercedes, they got, a, they got something going here at Mercedes. They got some serious shit at Mercedes. Serious shit, look at that leather. That is nice leather. Look at that. And then they got this lunar roof. It doesn't, it doesn't extend all the way to the back. And this, there's only two rows here. So most people, if they have bigger families, they're gonna need that GL. Damn, that's some nice leather. You see, that's exactly what I'm talking. When I get into a luxury car, everything in it is supposed to strike me. Every single feature, every single aspect of it, I'm supposed to look at it and say, holy smokes, what is that? How do I get that in my car? You know, every single feature of a luxury car is supposed to scream luxury. Like, look at these wood panels. The wood panels are nice. It, you know, you could tell this is like some laminate or something there. But um, it's just the attention to detail and the cut and the fit and finish. It's, it's just gorgeous. It's fantastic. Now, 
Now, some people, somebody might say, oh, well, why do you complain about the plastic capacitive touch buttons, but you're asking for LCD panels here? The thing about it is LCD panel technology is actually pretty good. The plastic touch panels, however, are not that great. Now, LCD technology, as long as you have a decent capacitive touch, it works so much better. And that's why when we have touchscreen navigation systems, we never really have a problem touching them and, and getting what we want to get done done. It's just that the plastic displays like I had in that, in that Cadillac where you've got chrome buttons, but you have to actually touch the plastic. It doesn't make any sense, you know? This, the, this is a very impressive car, and it's not impressive so much because of the price. If this car was the exact same car and the same price as that Cadillac, you'd still want this car instead. Not because of the Mercedes-Benz symbol, but simply because of, I mean, you look, the, the leather is just, it explodes in your face. And the wood, even the wood, I'm, I'm not even a wood panel person, and you can feel, if you feel under this, you can feel that this feels like an overlay. And who knows if that's even real wood. It just looks so goddamn good. And then you got the piano black uh, black cutouts. I wish I had those piano black cutouts in uh, my cars. I really do. Like, I don't like wood that much. I actually like the synthetic materials. It's just that the fit and finish has to look good. You know, everything in this thing looks fantastic. Now, it has a, it kind of has a high ride height, but it still looks, it, it looks absolutely fantastic. Like, um, I don't feel they really needed to, um, you know, to make the uh, command system any more difficult than it already is. Because the command system in the S-Class that we had was never really that hard to use. But, um, I mean, this works too. But I'll tell you right now, I do have one complaint about this car. And I guess that's because it's the coupe and not the GLE. It's that th this thing is tight. And I, don't, I guess it, it's partially because of the... Um, Partially because of the lower roof line. Yeah, yeah, this is a tight car. So anybody who complained about the BMW X6 is going to complain about this car too. It's a very, very tight, it's a very, very tight interior. Like, I, I, I really wouldn't be comfortable, me personally, in this car. I can't, like, I can't even, I can't even sit up straight. One of my legs is still out of the door. I, I like, look at that. Look at that, look at my leg. I can't even get my leg up in this thing. I would have to, in order for me to sit in this thing, I would have to put this seat right here, the passenger seat, all the way up front, and then sit behind the passenger. But then I'd have another problem. The ceiling, look at the ceiling. Look, look at my head. Holy smokes. Look at, I can't even, I can't sit up straight in this damn thing. I just can't sit up straight in this thing. I cannot sit up straight in this thing. It's, it's too small. And I think that's what, hurt the x6 a lot it's a good car for smaller people especially in china but uh that car is um you know most americans this car won't suit their needs this is a nice sports car or sports truck but most people this is not going to suit their needs you know i was one of the first people to bring you a review on the s class the american version because i remember the original one that i drove hadn't even uh, been for sale yet. So usually when I do my video reviews, I try to beat everybody else to it. The only problem is you got a lot of these competitions. You got like Osvald and they, they are in, in Germany. So they get these cars as soon as they come out. And then you've got all these other like CNET, Motor Trend, everybody gets to drive these cars first. And they get invited, you know, to the early things because they're really big names in media. But um, basically what I'm going to do is my iPhone 6S is going to have the uh, 4K recording. And I promised you that I would do a review of the white S-Class and the uh, in S-Class interior. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that review probably next week or the week after next whenever I get the phone and I have time with the car because I want to make my first 4K video. And I think I want my first 4K video to be a car review. And it's not just any 4K. It's not like some cheap 4K like on a Samsung phone. I'm going to make a 4K video with the 4K video on iPhone 6S. So um, pretty much, I think everybody's pretty much already experienced the S-Class. So basically, I'm kind of wasting my time. I've seen a lot of S-Class videos that haven't gotten many views online. My video, my video that I made, I made it so early that I got like 130 or 140,000 views over some time but um 
that's the only downside about making these car review videos. Everybody figured out how much money there is on YouTube to be made by making these videos. So the problem is now everybody's doing it first. And I was also one of the first people to make you a video of the CLA. And I was one of the first people to make a video of the C-Class. So I guess what I'll do is I'll make a 4K video of maybe even the GLE. I'll probably make a 4K video of the GLE instead of the S-Class. That probably makes more sense because nobody's watching the S-Class videos anymore. If I'm going to spend the time doing it, I want to, you know, I want to uh, make sure that I get lots and lots of views for it. And this right here is a V8, uh, I think this is the E-Class right here. You can look at the back, you can see it. They're about to redesign the E-Class and make it more like the new C-Class, which looks a lot like the new S-Class. So basically, you won't even have to buy an S-Class if you don't need all that space. You'll be able to buy a C-Class or you'll be able to buy an E-Class and you won't walk away feeling like you, you know, like you, you know, couldn't afford the $100,000 car. So instead, you'll just spend, what, $50,000, 60000 Because that C-Class, that C-Class with, uh, what is it? That C-Class is only for formatic and pretty decently loaded. That car is only fifty-three dollars or $55,000 before you factor in tax. And that's a pretty goddamn badass car. I mean, look at this car. It's smaller than the E-Class, but um, I didn't have a problem sitting in it. I was actually pretty comfortable driving it. But um, they are making a serious luxury product. Like BMW and Audi, they ain't got nothing on Mercedes-Benz, you know? And I, I, I think anybody who's reading this and, you know, not happy about what I'm saying, what you need to do is you need to take your uh, Audi or your BMW and you need to trade it for Mercedes-Benz. You need to do that now. Because it, it's like, if, you're got, if you really have to drive, you got to drive in comfort and luxury. You can't accept second best. You just can't. Because if you, if you ever accept second best, Next thing you know, you'll realize, you know what, you just wasted a lot of money. These cars are far superior to BMW, far superior to Audi in every single way.